today, we will learn physics of class 10 that is electricity. The rate of flow of charges is called electric current. It is carried by the electrons flowing in the conductor. Electric circuit is a continuous closed path of electric current. Remember, direction of flow of charges that is electrons is opposite to the direction of the electric current. We can derive the formula of current from its definition. Rate of flow of charges that is electric current, I, is equal to charge, Q, by time, T. The SI unit of charge is coulombs, C. One coulomb has the charge of nearly 6 into 10 raised to 18 electrons. The SI unit of time is seconds S dot the C unit of current is amperes, A. Other units of current are milliampere, ma, and microampere micrometer. The device used to measure electric current is ammeter. An electric current flows because of an electric potential difference V between any two points of a conductor. Potential difference is the work done per unit charge. Potential difference is also called voltage. The SI unit of potential difference is volt, V. One volt of potential difference is one unit of work done to move the charge of one coulomb from one point to another. The instrument used to calculate potential difference is called voltmeter. Galvanometer is the instrument that detects current in an electric circuit. Ohm's law states that potential difference between two points is directly proportional to the electric current at a constant temperature. This gives us V is equal to I into R here, R is the constant. R stands for resistant. Resistance is a property of conductor due to which it resists the flow of electric current through it. The SI of resistance is ohms. It is denoted by this Greek letter ohm. The component of an electric circuit which is used to regulate the current, without changing the voltage from the source, is called variable resistance. Rheostat is a device which is used in a circuit to provide variable resistance. Resistance in a conductor depends on nature, length and area of cross-section of the conductor. Resistance, R, is directly proportional to the length of the conductor. This is the cause that long electric wires create more resistance to the electric current. Resistance R is inversely proportional to the area of cross-section, A, of the conductor. This is the cause that thick copper wire creates less resistance to the electric current. Thus, resistance, R, is proportional to 1 by area of cross-section of conductor, A or, R is proportional to L by A. From equations 1 and 2, R is proportional to L by A. This gives R equals to rho into L by A, where, rho is the proportionality constant. It is called the electrical resistivity. From equation 2, R into A equals to rho into L. This implies, rho equals to R into A by L. Since, the SI unit of resistance is ohms. Therefore SI unit of resistivity is ohm meter. Materials having a resistivity in the range of 10 raised to minus 8 ohm meter to 10 raised to minus 6 ohm meter are considered as very good conductors. The resistivity of materials varies with temperature. We can arrange more than one resistors to get desired resistance by two combinations that is in parallel and in series. When resistors are joined from end to end, it is called in series. In this case, the total resistance of the system is equal to the sum of the resistance of all the resistors in the system. Let, three resistors R1, R2, and R3 get connected in series. Potential difference across A and B equal to V potential difference across R1, R2 and R3 equals to V1, V2 and V3. Current flowing through the combination equals to I. V equals to V1 plus V2 plus V3. According to Ohm's law, V1 equals to I R1, V2 equals to I R2 and V3 equals to I R3. Let, 
Total resistance equals to R into S then, V equals to IRS. From equations 1, 2 and 3, IRS equals to IR1 plus IR2 plus IR3. This implies, RS equals to R1 plus R2 plus R3 which is our formula for series of resistance. So starting from parallel resistance, here the starting and ending point of the resistors is the same. We will see the derivation of the formula of parallel resistance that is let three resistors R1, R2 and R3 connect in, connect in parallel and the starting and ending point is A and B. So the potential difference across point A and B is V current is I and the current flowing through R1, R2 and R3 is I1, I2 and I3 respectively. So from here total current is equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3 this means that uh, the current total current will be equal to the current in R1 plus current in R2 plus current in R3. Here the current total current is distributed in R1, R2 and R3 from point A as you can see. So we are saying that I is equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3. Since the potential difference across R1, R2 and R3 is the same that is V across according to Ohm's law I1 is equal to V by R1, I2 is equal to V by R3 and I3 is equal to V by R3 let total resistance equal to rp thus i is equal to v by rp from equations 1 2 and 3 v by rp is equal to v by r1 plus v by r2 plus v by r3 this gives us 1 by rp plus equals to 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 plus 1 by r3 in words we can say that when resistors are joined in parallel the reciprocal of the total resistance of the system is equal to the sum of reciprocal of the resistance of the resistors i know now some of you will be everything has gone about it but don't worry guys we are just converting the formula into words you can even try it yourself Now coming to the heating effect of electric current. Why does our laptop or mobile heat when we use it for a long period of time? Let's dive into our mobile. Let's imagine the laptop or mobile as a conductor. When the conduct current or charge flows in a con conductor it experiences a resistance. This resistance make the makes the charge moves slowly slowly this means that the kinetic energy of charge goes down but last year we studied the law of conservation of energy it states that the energy is always constant so we can say that from here the reduced kinetic energy comes out as heat energy so let's come to the formula of heat energy Let's revise what's denoted by what. Once current is denoted by I, resistance by R, potential difference by V, and charge by Q. Let's revise the formula of power which we studied in class 9. Power equals to work by time, that is, uh, rate of work done is equal is power. From, and charge equals to work by potential difference. From here, we can get work equals to potential difference into charge so putting it in power equals to work by time p is equal to vq by t and q by t is i so we can say that p is equal to vi therefore the formula of power becomes p equals to vi but why are we calculating the formula of power because work equals to pt from where did this come power equals to work by time that is work done rate of work done is power and this gives us work equals to power into time and work equals to energy so from here we can find the formula of heat energy just now we saw work equals to power into time 
and work equals to energy therefore heat or uh, heat energy or normal energy is equal to power into time there and p is equal to v i so we can say that heat is heat energy is equal to potential difference into char current into time this is our first formula applying ohm's law in this we will get heat energy equals to current squared into resistance into time this is our second formula easy and applying ohm's law the other way in the first equation we will get heat energy is equal to v squared t by r this becomes our third formula heating effects of electric current has many applications it is useful applications for example an electric iron an electric toaster an electric oven an electric kettle an electric heater etc let's see some of these in a bit detail first is bulb its main part that produces light is the filament that is made of tungsten this is because it has high resistance which creates more heat and if more heat is there then more light energy will be created it also has high melting point so that it does not melt at high temperature these qualities make tungsten an ideal for making the filament of the bulb it is thermally isolated by inactive nitrogen and high argon gas this is very important for the prolonged life of the bulb now let's see the power consumption most of the power is consumed by heat and the remaining is consumed by the light energy next is fuse which looks something like this it has a thin wire in it which is which has very less melting point which makes it melt when a higher current flows through it than required this prevents short short circuit in our house thus keep keeping us safe it is usually made by metals or alloys such as aluminium copper iron lead or any other less melting point material in previous episode we saw that heat is heat energy is equal to power into time from here we can say that power equals to heat by time and we also studied the three formulas of heat energy heat energy equals to v i t v squared t by r i squared r t now now only we saw that power equals to heat energy by time so we can get the formulas of power from heat energy formulas that is power equals to potential difference into current power equals to potential difference squared by resistance and power equals to current squared into resistance Let's see one below the other. Power equals to V i. T is equal to V squared by R, and P is equal to I squared R T. 